Okay, what to do with these two little gliders? Well, I'm going to make something different, as I said before, using two gliders this time. Okay, I think I've shown you already how to get these uh, cockpits off, and it is, in my opinion, quite beneficial to keep these sections intact if you can, because that will help keep it in place. We will be cutting that area out for the receiver and for the battery compartment, okay, and gain access to everywhere else. But if we can keep those parts intact, it will help. Okay, for the benefit of those that uh, haven't seen it before, so here's one on again. What you need to try and do, and you can hear it cracking, is pull it apart like that. Get your head cracking. That's the glue. Because this is flexible and the glue isn't. So it will give up. Okay. Bear in mind we already know we have a gap there and we have a gap there. We can't push all the way through there. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a gap there. Not quite working well there. There we go. Push something nice in there. There you go, can you hear it cracking? Keep pushing. There we go, I'm all the way through. Tilt it. I'll say, with some luck and patience, you should be able to uh, get the cockpit off intact without too much damage. There you go, see I'm through that side. Now when you get to that part there, push that bit under, there you go, there, glue is still intact, there you go, There you go, there's our bolt, it's like that. All the bolts I've had have been a bit dirty and grimy and full of oil. Okay, so you see I've got that bit intact, that bit intact. Bit of glue was a bit stubborn there, maybe I should have forced it and priced it under a bit. But we're going to be cutting that bit out anyway, so we're not worried about that. Then we can remove the, uh, the bits of glue. It's still on there and there. There you go, look, see what I mean? It's because there you go. That's how we get it off. Okay, now I'm gonna be using two gliders to make one plane here. Uh, so I will get back to you, but I want this to be quite a simple and easy build. I don't think anyone should get too complicated with it. All right, so when I've uh, completed the next stage, I'm gonna cut these holes out. When I've done them, I'll uh, get back to you. Okay, so I've uh, cut a hole out here for the battery stroke receiver, hole out for the servo as well. Um, this one I've not done yet. Oh, let's see. My idea is to get a 2S battery and a servo in, so nothing complicated, nothing that you haven't seen already. Okay, the uh, knife I've used to uh, cut deep and cut it into cubes, like that. Okay, that way I can pull it out, there you can see cut it into cubes so use a uh, long nose pliers and uh, it's quite easy to remove the uh, unwanted foam to get your servos in and uh, anything else that you need to get in. So 
So I'm going to continue with that now. And uh, when I've done that, I'll get back to you. There we go. So I went there nice. So let's tidy this a little up. Cut. I'm going to cut all that lat out. Okay, so uh, now that I've cut the slot out of the wing to accept my uh, servo, I need to make a hole in the cockpit area to get this wire through. Okay, I've decided to use the brass tube method that I've used before and simply at the centre and aim towards that hole. There, I'm twisting and turning it as I push it to make a hole through. It just makes a cleaner cut as far as I am uh, concerned. There we go, we're about to... There you go. simple case of thread the wire through the hole and glue into position. And there it is. So now it's a simple case of just uh, glue that into position so I'm going to do that now and uh, then it's time to move on to the the wings then now I use contact adhesive on these rather than hot glue Some cheap uh, nine gram servos. Now that I've made sure my servo is clear as like that, helps uh, streamline it so the air is eating less. Next, I cut the uh, outer edge of the tail plane off and uh, shaped so I've only got half a tail plane half a tail plane ok so I've got to take the square edge off that and make it a bit more aerodynamic like that one Okay, so now I've put a sharp piece of bamboo skewer in there and I've made the hole in there. It's time to glue the glue glue it and put it together to make a new tail plane. Okay, as uh, this build we'll be using picturons. I quite like picturons, it keeps things simple as far as I'm concerned. Measured uh, 44 millimeters, set my caliper to 44 millimeters uh, from this line here outwards. Made a mark 44 millimeters, and again, there to keep it straight. Fresh knife blade. I use a steel ruler to uh, line up the lines and keep yourself a straight edge. Now try and keep your knife blade at 90 degrees otherwise you're going to have to do some sanding to keep it straight always seems a bit disconcerting doesn't it cutting through your wing cutting your wing off I 
and there we have it I'm happy with that that was a perfect cut perfect cut that one 90 degrees and we've got a nice 90 degrees flush fit in there so it can be done quite easily so now it's time to move on to the next part so I'll uh, get on. hello there so what I'm going to do now is show you how I made the little duo glider that I made and you may have seen flying if you haven't check out my other videos well, okay the first task was to glue the two tail planes together uh, on the edge now there is a cocktail stick between the two together there so that's quite strong and sturdy the outer side of the tail plane has been cut off and removed and just shaped because i wanted to keep this locking mechanism so that it will slot into the fuselage now that those have been glued together i know how, how wide or how long the center section needs to be okay i'm measuring the distance between this center line and the center line there was let's see, do it in millimeters 150 millimeters okay each section so now i know the distance there and i've cut the outer portion of my wing off as i would do in normal this side of the wing needed to be shorter so if you look closely you'll see injection marks down the center there and all along here but I'm not interested in those, I'm interested in the centre sections here. So from the centre there, out 150 millimetres. From the centre, injection moulding, 150 millimetres. That would give me a perfectly straight cut, and that's what I did. So 150 mm cut off, cut that one off, glued the two together. So that's my centre section. And you'll see now that it lines up with that one too. Okay, so... That's the centre section done and the outer portions of the wing cut off. So it was a case of uh, deciding where I was going to put my centre spar and my control rod. Okay, the centre spar and mine I decided to do it 70 millimetres. Okay, and 40 millimetres for my control rod. Okay, now the carbon spar, because it's going to be quite long, has to be quite stiff. So I used a, th a thick carbon tube into which another carbon tube fits snugly. Okay, and what I decided worked for me was this is a six millimeter outer diameter with a four millimeter inner diameter, and the tube that goes in is four millimeter outer, and I think it's three inner. It's quite a thin tube that, but that doesn't really matter because it's going to be supported by this larger tube okay and uh, the length of the thinner inner tube was cut to 51 centimeters okay 51 centimeters in the end of each I put a bolt super glued it in place and I chopped the end off okay and then filed it so that the knot would fit on first I, I did that again on this end as well, so nut on the bolt first, glue it in, chop the head off, take the nut off so that it would free the thread up, okay, so that's my centre section was done, okay, that fits inside there perfectly, so it was a case of now boring a hole all the way through the wing, now some of you might think, well, are you going to keep that perfectly straight on line? like a lot of things if you jig it and think about it it'll work so we now know that our distance from the leading edge to our center of our spy is uh, 70 millimeters i think it was let me just double check yep 70 millimeters so what i did i don't know if you can see it on the camera there i shoved a pin in okay measured 70 mils from there to there and i shoved a pin in okay i then weighed that down and secured that to a board to keep it still so it wouldn't move okay now I'll so show you that next section on how I did that okay so with the center section glued together and pinned to the board so that it won't move I'll weigh it down so it won't move pin set at either end measured from 70 mil from the leading edge to the pin 
I now know where I want to bore my line. I've set some bolts wood on the building board as well, six mil thick. So that'll be determine my height and keep a level thing. My ruler was placed along the two pins. That will give me a straight edge now continuing on. Okay, all it was a case of doing then, make sure that doesn't move. Put a piece of triangular wood or any kind of wood underneath there and line it up like that. Once I'm happy at that, it'll level with the butt that line. I now have a straight edge. It's a case of remove the ruler. Pin this section down, strike through the board so it doesn't move. Right, so now nothing's going to move, everything's weighed down. I now know where I want to run my borehole. And what I use, you may have seen again, brass tube. I have a, a rod that fits in it, and that's to push the uh, excess foam out. So all it's a case of doing is line that up with there, keep pressure on it, and if I turn it clockwise, it will automatically try and force itself into that bottom corner, keeping it straight. And all it's a case of doing is boring in like that. And just keep going slowly, and it'll follow the line all the way through. And that's how I did it. Okay, so once I've finished boring the hole through the centre section, again, keeping it pinned down, the outer section of the uh, wing, it was a case of line it up to there, like that, pin that down, weigh that down so it doesn't move, and then continue boring the hole all the way through to there. I measured 70 millimetres in, I think it was, board in. How did I know it was 70 mil in? I made a mark on the felt with a felt tip pen on here when it was touching that part there, and then measured 70 mil out. Once I got to that line, I knew I was 70 mil deep. I could withdraw it all the way through. I would have my hole on there, turn the wing round, place the other section of the other wing on, and repeat the process. That way, I know that that wing will perfectly line up with the centre section and the rod will go straight through perfectly. Um, the uh, six mil tube, carbon tube was inserted and glued into the section. I would push it halfway in, or that way, put some glue on it and push it in. It's quite a, a, a thick, tough, tight squeeze to get it in. It was tight, tight squeeze. I have a little bit of the uh, carbon tube uh, wider than the centre section, which you can see there, and there, and that, that's tacked to the, a bush so it doesn't rub against this when the two are on. Because the inner tube is thinner, I used the outer part of a snake, which is the blue sleeving, which I found was a perfect uh, to go on there. The centre section of a thinner snake, I used it as a bush for the cut, the wire. Okay, but before I put that tube in, I have another mechanism. Okay, so now that I've uh, glued and inserted the outer carbon tube, and it's glued into position, slightly proud, okay, on both sides, I uh, need to put a bush in this side as well with a locking mechanism. Okay, now I was lucky enough to find a brass bar with a thread in it that's usually used in circuit boards to keep the circuit board off the metalwork or anything like that. Uh, it wasn't quite wide enough for what I wanted, so I soldered another brass tube over that to in increase the diameter. Okay, now if you can't source one of those, the other thing to do would again use a brass tube but put a nut in it and solder the nut that fits the thread. That you've got on the end of there okay so 
that threads onto there okay but we still need a bush to go in there okay because that's the locking mechanism now uh, when you make radial control planes some people use uh, snakes to control the uh, surfaces and i think this is a sullivan's uh, snake and this is the blue blue one and this is the outer part of the snake which just so happens to be a perfect fit to go over this carbon tube and now that i've put a brass tube over this and sold it in position they are both the same diameter okay so all i need to do now is put some tape over it because i will be gluing this into position but i don't want glue to get in between the two otherwise that will uh, foul up the locking mechanism and ruin everything for me okay so Now there's some tape on there, okay, that's my mechanism fine. What I need to do now, put some glue in there, some glue on there, but not too much because we don't want it oozing out. And what I need to do is push it in there like that, but what I want to make sure it's slightly proud again, but not too much. There you go. And that is now my locking mechanism in place okay i would also need to put a washer between the two so that when they are together let's put that together for you like that. got a nice moving mechanism and of course the same goes on the other end slide that in there and spin course as uh, if you wanted you could leave it all together okay don't do it too tight because otherwise it'll not move so that's the wing now so that just needs sliding into the fuselage hope that's revealed there uh, and good tip for you okay so now it's time to move back to the fuselage so we've already glued our servo into position so it's one servo for each side and make sure that when you assemble it you only have one serve on the outside one serve on the outside otherwise if you have two on the same side you, you're not going to be able to do it they both need to be on the outside uh, when you assemble it again remember not to assemble it that way so servos are on the outside okay so we've uh, got our hole through to our battery bay and receiver now you will need two batteries and two receivers for this now um, what you'll need to set up as well is depending on your setup this one will be channel one and the receiver in this side will be channel two okay and uh, if you wanted you could use 35 megahertz because those are quite cheap uh, receivers and they have two separate receivers with the same crystal in and they'll both work the same now the battery only needs to be small because it's only going to be powering one receiver and one servo that is all it will be powering okay same in this side all you will need is uh, one battery small battery to power the one servo on the one receiver okay uh, there are a couple of sizes that have worked for me uh, a two cell 350 milliamp and the um, another two cell which is 240 milliamp now obviously you need to keep the weight down because the weight on both of them will make it nose heavy alternative to that if you want to put bigger battery in you'll have to put a weight in the tail end to counteract the fact that you've got two heavy weights at the front okay now the other thing you'll need to do is make up a control arm okay which is just a bit of bent metal with a z bend on it okay now the Z bend for you may be different depending on where you've positioned this arm and how far down it is. Okay, but I'm just going to measure this one for you. Okay, so for me it worked out at about just short of 30 millimeters total length of the arm. 
and to insert into the wing which is this section here again 30 millimeters so a 60 millimeter piece of wire okay it's a simple job now of inserting the wing and putting the arm on so if I put the arm on like that okay insert the wing And I push it beyond the point of what he actually wants it because we're going to be tilting the wing to get our arm in. Okay, so we turn it over now. Okay, and I need to slide this control arm into the bush that we've inserted into the wing. Okay, so slide it back enough to clear which is about there, raise your wing up and insert that wire control arm into the bush which is there let's get a bit closer there we go Right now, push the fuselage into position. There you go. That's now into position. That's one wing. So I need to push it beyond the centre for about what was it, 30, three centimetres, 30 millimetres. Where's my other control arm? There we go. Okay. So. Insert your control arm into your servo, lay it down on the fuselage like that, raise the wing up and slowly push it towards your bush. Now the plastic tube inside the wing helps prevent it from where you, you probably could if you're not too interested in how long it's going to last just put it straight in there we go. push until the clear there you go Straighten her up, turn that over, tail plane can now be pushed into position. Power up both your receivers and you're good to go. There we go. So that was nice and easy. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is um, you can use a Beck if you're using lipos, which is a battery elimination circuit. Or I've got some very small uh, 2S speed controls for brushed motors. I don't use brushed motors anymore. I'm not going to use the motor, but it will still supply me the uh, five volts that I need from a 2S battery so that's a small lightweight uh, solution to using a Beck and as it's not drawing a lot of current it's just powering one servo and one receiver it's ideal really okay there you go